this is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post, coming to you from the Fort Hall School of Government. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning, but we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 23rd of August, 2022, and I am 2 J. I am JM. And I am Miss K. Again, in case you missed today's headlines, here they are. Daily Nation, was it stolen? Mm. Standard, Raila, my case against IEBC. Mm. The star, how Chabukati, 56 hackers stole my votes, that Raila. That is a winning headline. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the People Daily, <laughs> Raila wants Ruto Chabukati blocked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll kick us off. Now that nine petitions have been filed at the Supreme Court, challenging the results of the 2022 election, the question is, what next? According to Article 140 of the Constitution, the Supreme Court has 14 days in which to hear and determine all nine petitions. Yeah. But what does the Supreme Court do on each of those 14 days? Yeah. The Supreme Court Presidential Election Petition Rules 2019 give a detailed explanation of the process of the court. Allow me to walk you through that process. Mm. So today, 23rd August, the nine petitions were served on the respondents and the interested parties. This means that IBC, the IBC chairperson of Fula Chebukati, the six IBC commissioners, the AG, Waihiga Mwaore, and George Wajakoya have all been served with copies of the petition. Mm. These respondents then have two options, mm. to either support the petition or oppose the petition. If they choose to support the petition, then they have three days until Friday, 26th August, to file a notice of intention not to oppose the petition. Mm. If they file this notice, then they will not be allowed to appear or act as a party in the petition. Mm. But if the respondents choose to oppose the petition, then they have four days until Saturday, 27th August, to file and serve a response to the petition. And we can be sure that if no one else opposes the petition, William Ruto, through his lawyers, will file a response opposing the petitions. Mm. The petitioners, that is Baba, Martha, Omtata, Civil Society, Ruben Kegame, Moses Kuria, then have 24 hours until Sunday to file and serve a rejoinder or reply to the response. Mm. Work with me. But two more things can also happen on that same Sunday. The first is that the parties to the petition may file interlocutory applications. Mm -hmm. An interlocutory application is an application pending the main case making a request for the court's assistance. Mm. Now, in 2017, Raila and Kalonzo, as the petitioners, made an interlocutory application seeking orders of access and of scrutiny of the forms 34A, 34B, and 34C used in the presidential election, as well as access to information relating to IEBC's electoral technology system. Mm -hmm. Now, the second thing that can happen on Sunday is that any person can make a third-party application application to be admitted as amicus curie or a friend of the court. Yeah. In 2017, the Attorney General and the Law Society of Kenya applied and were accepted as friends of the court. Mm. Now, if either of these applications are made, the other side has 24 hours until Monday, 29th August, to respond to the application and the court may give the ruling to these applications using electronic means. Now, at this point, I want you to note that for seven days, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court and all the parties to the petitions have been engaged in boring, paper-heavy, back-end legal <laughs> work. The first time the public will see the Supreme Court judges will be next Tuesday, 30th August 2022, at the pre-trial conference. Wow. And the pre-trial conference is important because at the pre-trial conference, the court will do six things. Mm. One, the court will frame the contested and uncontested issues in the petition. Two, the court will consider whether to consolidate those nine petitions filed into one consolidated petition. The court will also determine the number of advocates that it will hear on behalf of the parties to the petition. Mm -hmm. Four, the court will allocate time for each party to address it. Five, the court will give directions on the place and the time of the <laughs> hearing. And finally, it can make any other orders that may be necessary to ensure a fair hearing of the petition. Yeah. Immediately after that pre-trial conference, we start 
the hearing of the petition from Wednesday next week. The fun part. The fun part. <laughs> the one that will be televised. That yeah. part will be live. live. So once the hearing starts, it will continue uninterrupted every day until it is completed. Yeah. And according to Rule 18.2 of the Supreme Court rules, the petition shall be determined on the basis of two things. Mm -hmm affidavit evidence and written submissions. Now the Supreme Court judges have until Monday 5th September 2022 to tell us their verdict mm. and they may make the following orders. The court may dismiss all or some of the nine petitions. It may declare the election of the president-elect to be valid or invalid mm -hmm. and it may make any other order it deems fit and just in the circumstances. For the next two weeks, we will systematically break down and walk you through each of these petition processes. Oh, yes. Mm. Now that Ms. K has told us that there are nine petitions before the Supreme Court, one of the next steps is to consolidate those petitions into similar thematic areas. So today I will explain what some of those thematic clusters may look like and what the allegations are. But before we get there, I think it's important that we take a moment to understand how we arrived at this point. Mm. That is, how the Supreme Court, as the ultimate election court, has become a secondary theatre of war in this election process. We have reminded the public in the past that the Maraga ruling of 2017 nullified that election on the basis of two broad considerations, illegalities and irregularities. But in conclusion, in paragraph 402, the court said that their decision to nullify should, and I quote, lead IBC to soul searching and to go back to the drawing board. If not, this court, whenever called upon to adjudicate on a similar dispute, will reach the same decision if the anomalies remain the same irrespective of who the aspirants may be. Mm. Consistency and fidelity to the Constitution is a non-wavering commitment this court makes. Very simple. The court was warning IEBC to get their house in order or else. And CJ Martha Kome reiterated this same position just this year. Mm -hmm. And so why do I begin my submission by going back to the court's ruling in 2017? Because if there is evidence that the IEBC have not learned from their mistakes, or worse yet, created space for more shocking errors, the court has promised the people of Kenya consistency and fidelity to the constitution. That's right. The point, therefore, is that anyone with evidence of misconduct has every right to take their concerns before the Supreme Court. End of discussion. Now, with that said, the accusations presented before the court are many, but we will attempt to narrow them down to just a few. One, did Chebukati have the right to unilaterally declare the results? Mm -hmm. And does it matter that four commissioners discredited, disavowed, and ran away from the Chebukati-led process? If so, what do they know? Two. Did William Ruto actually meet the constitutional threshold of 50% plus one? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of confusion around turnout figures, spoilt ballots, and just general mathematics. Mm -hmm. Three, how secure was the IEBC system? A KPMG audit from June this year pointed to glaring security problems. Ghost returning officers with the ability to move, delete, and add voters and ghost voters in unknown locations. On top of this, various petitions point to instances of hacking that require investigation. Mm. Four, the role of Smartmatic and these mysterious Venezuelans who were arrested in June. What did they have in their suitcases? Mm -hmm. And were crimes committed that affected the integrity of the election? Yes. To be clear, this does not cover all of the petitions, and this is not our, our opinion, but rather what was written. But it is an idea of some of the queries that are being raised. And unfortunately, as Ms. K has told us, the exciting part of the court process that Kenyans are drooling for uh, is one week away. Yeah. So until then, we will be here to break down those various allegations around the election, because it is not over until it's over. That's right, that's right. Now, I today we'll unpack 
three irregularities regarding Form 34As. Mm. Number one, according to the People's Petition, Wafula wa Nyonye Chabukati ordered Informal Lycos, the ballot printing firm, mm. to print two sets of Form 34A result declaration forms. Yes. Now, that is like me going to my school principal and bribing him to print two sets of exam transcript forms <laughs> so that should I score D's and E's, I can reproduce my own transcript that looks like the original, but that shows I got A's and B's. <laughs> On this one, Chebukati, by the way, Usitubebe Malenge, or as the deputy president is fond of saying to Kenyans, Kenya Elisha Wajinga. Number two, the people's petition submits and provides evidence to show that Form 34As were first illegally uploaded into an alien virtual parking lot mm. before being uploaded onto the IEBC portal. Let's just pause here for a minute. When I say alien, I mean the IP address of this parking lot mm. where forms were being uploaded did not belong to IEBC mm. and that is why it is alien. Virtual means of course that it was not a physical site since we are talking about electronic transmission. Mm. Parking lot means it was the equivalent of a temporary storage space, a warehouse, if mm -hmm. you would like, but not the final destination of the forms. Yeah. Now, the People's Petition tells us that the digital manipulation would take place in an alien virtual parking lot. That's where it took place. The forms would be stored there temporarily downloaded by rogue elements, digitally manipulated and then uploaded onto the IEBC portal, their final destination where all Kenyans were now free to download and examine them. I hope you're getting the mischief here. I hope according, you're working according, according to the petitions files. According to the petitions files. Let me explain in layman's terms. Instead of the form 34As using the Nairobi Expressway to reach Bomas, some rogue elements in UDA decided to take the long route. They used Uhuru Highway, then at the roundabout they got to Nyayo Stadium, then they went Langata Road, then they took a detour to Rongai before coming back to Bomas. Surely, as I said, Kenya, Elisha, Wajinga. Wajinga. Number three, the John Gidongo Affidavit. Mm. This damning affidavit tells us that the one self-appointed field marshal as he likes to call himself Dennis Oletumbi, mm -hmm. ordered a team of 56 IT hackers to digitally manipulate Form 34As on what is now called the Uchaguzi 2022 mm -hmm. platform. And since one plus one is two, this alien virtual parking lot I was referring to earlier is the same thing as Uchaguzi 2022. <laughs> We can therefore confirm that Uchaguzi 2022 is where the fraudulent alterations containing, and here I'm quoting the John Kidongo petition, mm -hmm. containing false, exaggerated, or suppressed votes would be cooked and then uploaded onto the IABC server. Mind you, guys, I'm not, I'm not giving you an opinion. These are the petitions. This is what the petitions are saying. Mm -hmm. Once again, Surely, there is a shortage of fools in Kenya. <laughs> so what are these petitions telling us in sum? The message is simple. Raila worked hard. Mm. He played fair. But Ruto worked smart. He played foul. And so the question before the Supreme, Supreme Court is this. Foul or fair? Foul or fair? Mm. As Professor Muta Hinguni said last week, Kenya Kwanzaa, but Haki Kwanzaa. If Ruto won fairly, Kenya will move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But if there was thuggery at IEBC, we must correct it for the sake of Kenya. Yep. Kenya will remain. Elections will come and go. Then the best man will win. It is that simple. Mm -hmm. Uhuru Kenyatta is a firm believer in institutions and their independence. And that is why during this election and to date, in spite of incumbency, in spite of deep state, in spite of special branch DCI, KRA, in spite of all the executive powers that he has had, in his wisdom, he insisted that institutions 
must not be interfered with irregardless of how rogue they have decided to be mm. due process must be uh, followed it must take its course the rule of law and justice must prevail very true yes. very true mm -hmm. we yes. have a three part criteria that we use to judge the headlines for you we ask ourselves three questions is the headline topical or speculative repetitive or groundbreaking thoughtful or just plain lazy and i think that we had a tie between daily nation was it stolen mm -hmm. and the star how chabukati 56 hackers stole my votes the star Ryla. Some juicy stuff <laughs> star Stop. I say we keep it winning. I, I, we keep it as a tie. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are back from our self-imposed self-care break. And you can also find us on your TV screens. We're on Pang Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Have a lovely evening.